The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Hey, Bunny, guess what? Guess what? No, actually, guess. Um... Barbecued squid. No, 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 my desaturating friend. I don't even know what desaturating means. I'm just a big Primus fan. Primus has a new album that came out, and it's their first album of of new music in a really long time, because their last album was, of course, Primus and the Chocolate Factory, where they just recorded bizarre covers of the entire soundtrack to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory from the 70s. So I was really excited because I'm a huge Primus fan. Oh, they have a new album coming out. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And then I bought the album and I didn't realize that apparently Primus is going back to their prog roots. Okay. And is that, is that, that what they means, were considered? I didn't think so. But what that means to me is their new album is very difficult to listen to. <laughs> Like every song's like nine minutes and it's rambling and they, they're struggling to have like a concept album about these demons. I don't I don't know what the fuck it's about. I'm trying really hard to be into it. Yeah. But it's just it's difficult. It's difficult. Anyway, it's homework time yet again on the Pop on Film Podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention please. Cease your Snapchatting and pay attention. And just to be clear, this is it. it this is the uh, Venn diagram of my social media. Okay? okay. Facebook is for sharing things that happen to me with my friends and family. Instagram is when I feel that I actually look pretty attractive and want to show that off. Uh, Twitter is when I want to shit on Donald Trump or say something offensive. Uh-huh. And Snapchat is for when I'm fucking bored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said that I said that to Bella, and Bella's like, oh my god, you have to write that down. And I'm like, <laughs> I did write it down. It's a part of the podcast. You need to write that down separately from the podcast, because that is what the <laughs> Each week, the dreaded Council of Emeralds shrugs and rolls their eyes, because that's Emerald. Yeah. And choose this a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. A homework assignment that has been painstakingly chosen with the expressed intent of bettering our listeners. Nay, all right-thinking people everywhere. Except for you, former Sacramento, California, ABC News 10 anchor Dale Shornack. Yeah. He knows why. He knows what he did. And he better get so, that check over here before everybody else knows why, too. My my brother-in-law, like about 10 years ago, sent me a, a like a, a Facebook, like Facebook gave me a message and it said, uh, Randall Burkett wants to add you as his brother. Do you accept or deny? Yeah, and so I just, I just, I just didn't answer it, and I haven't for like a decade. Genie's home. Oh, honey. Hi, honey. Did you have a good day? Did you have a good day? He's asking. Um, it was a very busy day, and 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 I had to stay an hour overtime, and there was road construction, so I had to go a long way around with lots of traffic, and I had to stop to get gas. Wow, you had a full day. Yes. Yeah, you had a very full day. Uh, so, so Randall wanted to add me as his brother-in-law, and I, I still have yet to answer it. It's been like a decade. Okay. I still haven't accepted or denied that. But apparently, you know, anyone can just put something like that on Facebook, and the other person has to accept or deny it. So I decided to pick my favorite uh, TV news anchor in Sacramento, which at the time was uh, News 10's Dale Shornack, and yeah. at him as my husband. Oh, nice! And so I just put it on Facebook that Dale Shornack was my husband, and then I it 
it was sent directly to News 10's Dale Shornack, and he denied it. So I kept doing it over and over again for about two years. Can I do that with Mike Pence? Probably. Can I make, could I put, can I put Mike Pence as my husband on Facebook? If I can do it with News 10's Dale Shornack, then you could probably do it with Mike Pence. (laughs) And this week, because it is Diet Pope on film, we've got a real simple homework assignment. It's a YouTube playlist of seven songs, and each song was chosen with careful, detailed carelessness. Uh-huh. So we are gonna we are we are just gonna talk about these seven songs. But first, a programming note: there is no notes from the bookstore this week, and there's a good reason why. Last week, uh, this past week, something big happened. Yeah, real big. And I need a lot of time to discuss it. Okay. So I am, I am intrigued. Next, yeah. So next week, be sure and look next week for next week's notes from the bookstore. It's a big one. It's a big <laughs> one. So the first song on the playlist is called Big Enough. Yes. And it's a song by Kieran J. Callanan. He's an Australian singer songwriter. He was allegedly the guitarist for a band called Mercy Arms, but they broke up in 2009, and this dude went solo. The song is just bland and normal and boring. Then you get to the screaming guy? (laughs) He's just some old guy on a mountain or in the clouds, and he's just screaming. Well, I I think it was two different screaming guys, wasn't it? Two different screaming guys? It's just... It's just... Just screaming. It's just screaming. Okay, so first this was really, the whole cowboy thing was so broke back mountain. Oh, yes. It totally was. They were giving each other, and and what the hell was the song? It was was something about, so the one guy is the white hat, the other guy is the black hat, and they're both singing separately about how they don't really need to fight or something. Yeah, the YouTube com the YouTube comments for this are amazing. And then there was a point where there was a split screen, so you would see the both of them at the same time, and uh-huh. that was looking really. That was like, that was complete. I-, I expected one to spit in his hand, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then the screaming guy. I, I think it was two. I think it was one for each of them. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this yeah, the, the, it's amazing. Yeah, this is both of them when they're older. Oh, okay, so they're older. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see I see what you're saying. Yeah. But yeah, there was a split screen and, and like they they hate each other, but then the magic of their old self screaming just brings them together. Well, they 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 made peace with each other. So neither one of them is dead. They both yeah. got old. Oh, I get it. It, it. it looks like it's the same old old person, at least to me, except they're both dressed in like the same sort of white hat, black hat, yeah. and they're yelling. I mean, I could be the wrong. One, I, I could be wrong, yeah. but but and really, I hope I'm wrong because I hope I'm not giving this fucking video that much credit. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, this guy is going out of his way as a musician. He's going out of his way to try and piss people off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, music magazine The Fader had an article about him, how Kieran J. Callanan embraced bad taste. Okay. And then The Guardian said, um, it, it said about him, that he is seriously talented at taking the piss. Okay. So I guess this guy's, I don't know, trying to be like a musical Andy Kaufman and trying to make bad songs and bad music and kind of piss people off. And I guess, uh, you know, your video has 2.8 million views, so congratulations, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I guess it's a success. So. Next up 
is actor, musician, German ultra celebrity, and SpongeBob SquarePants hero David Hasselhoff. Yes, and, and that was his that was song, the Guardians. Guardians. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his video for Guardians of the Galaxy too. And uh, watching this video, it must be really sad to be David Hasselhoff because you. Oh, you I know. know you're Oh my god! You know you're kind of a joke now. Like you used to be, like a sex symbol. You used to be this big, huge, massive thing, and now you're kind of a joke. And so, you you just yeah. But he was a he was a sex symbol in a kind of tiger beat sort of way. Yeah, you know, I mean, he was a sex symbol to some, but a, a lot of other people didn't take him seriously, like ever. Yeah. Yeah. I I read an interview with David Hasselhoff in in a you know that Entertainment Weekly I think they interviewed him because he had this video coming out and David Hasselhoff said, "Oh, it was great, you know, uh it, it was directed by the director of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 and of course he's a big fan of of mine and so of course I pitched him my idea for a serious reboot of Knight Rider and he seemed very excited so I'm very excited about that uh-huh. we, we can't announce anything yet but you know we're we're talking about it and I'm very excited about that and that made me so freaking depressed <laughs> that like uh, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is dusting off David Hasselhoff and of course David Hasselhoff is like well I have you here let me tell you my ideas for the Night Rider TV show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like that's sad. That's really sad. I but always, videos- I always found that show so dead boring. Oh hell yeah! But oh, I was yeah. also a grown up by the time it came out. Yeah, you know. But I, I, was, I, I am still, I, was, I am still angry at his daughter for releasing that drunk video of David Hasselhoff. Uh, him on the floor eating the like burger and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's real fucking. Because I was like, you know, motherfucker, if I was David Hasselhoff, I'd be drunk too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, good Christ, give him. Thanks for humiliating David Hasselhoff. Do you think he does not know how this feels? <laughs> yeah. I really, I that's really like. like... Re- that's really kicking your father when he's down. <laughs> yeah. I really like the video because all of the, the, the cast members of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 yeah. are there. Like, okay, there's Batista, and there's, uh, as the drummer, there's the director, and, and there's uh, Yondu, and uh-huh. Zoe, whatever her name is. There's Kirk from Stars Hollow. But then I start, like, halfway through the video, I'm like, okay, so they got all of the stars but they couldn't get Chris Pratt. Like I, that, yeah. That's what I was thinking when I first saw it. Like, oh, Chris Pratt's too big to of a star now to be in this crappy video. But then he shows up at the exact last second mm-hmm. with a yes. fake 70s porn mustache as the guy in the robot outfit, and I really liked that. Yes, yes. I, 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 I liked how... Like, that kind of shit was all over when Star Wars came out. Yeah. When yeah. the first, when the first Star Wars, the very first Star Wars movie came out, everything had some kind of stupid alien and stupid set design. <clears throat> it was all over the place. So it was kind of funny to see it for a Guardians of the Galaxy song. Yeah. So the third video, because Guardians, because um, because Star Wars can. Lick Guardians of the Galaxy's asshole. That's why. Yes. That's fucking I'm, why. I'm kind of. I'm. I'm sick of Star Wars. I'm yeah. Just sick of Star Wars. I. Fans of Star Wars are corporate nerds. Yeah. I said yeah. it. I said it right here. They are corporate yeah. nerds. Yeah. That's not what fandom used to be. Fandom used to be finding the arcane and the hidden. And and the, the that thing that you know and nobody else knows and you love it and fuck those stupid people. That was fandom. 
Star yeah. Wars is Disney, which is the biggest company ever now. Yeah. So you're just a bunch of corporate suck up nerds. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right, I said it. The third video is from Primus, whose new album, again, is insanely challenging, even to hardcore fans like me. So in 1998, Primus released an EP, an extended play. It's what's between a single and a full album. And the album featured covers of Primus songs, including like like Metallica doing a Primus cover. It's it, it's a Primus album that doesn't that hardly actually features Primus in it. Yeah. But covers of Primus. But if you were smart enough in 1998 to get your CD that you just bought and put it in your computer, then your computer would automatically play the video for Devil Went Down to Georgia. Uh-huh, okay. Which is which is a beautiful, uh, uh, what is it, uh, stop-motion claymation video that yes. is absolutely beautiful and incredible, and it would play on Spike and Mike's Sick and Twisted Festival of Animation all the time, and it's just really beautiful. And I hadn't seen it for a while, so I looked it up, and of course it's on YouTube because everything's on YouTube. If she wants to come in, let her come in. She wants she wants to come in because she's under the impression that Mommy is in here. So let her in. Hi, Eleanor. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Door? Is that it? Okay. Hold on, buddy. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi. Maxwell? Yes. Hi. I'm just screaming at the door. Yeah, she woke up. She's upset. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You tried to take over the podcast. It's fine. You do that. Here. So, anyway, I just wanted to put that Primus on there. I hadn't seen that in a while. I really like it. Next hey, it was it on- was fun. Okay. That was the only reason it was... Yeah. I, I, I can never tell a Primus song. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've ever heard a Primus song that I didn't like. But... I can never tell it's them. You can always tell that it's Primus just because um, the bass strings are insanely loose. Yeah. But next, the next song, the fourth one on the list, it, it, this is important. It's a viral video that's called, that's known as, on the internet, it's known as The Tingo Scra. The Tingo Scra. It's a it's a a a, a, a dude m- 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 rapping insanely of bizarre noises that you can barely understand on BBC Radio, and it, someone came up with a fake uh, captions, and it's difficult. It's a difficult song to understand, and I've seen bits and pieces of this video for a long ass time on the internet, so I decided to try and get to the bottom of it. I saw a number of videos. Uh, until I found one with the rapper's name, and then I found some other videos with that names him as something different. Then finally, I figured it out. This guy is a joke. Okay. The guy who does the Tingo Scra is actually an actor and comedian named Michael Dapa, and this is a rap persona that he came up with. So this song is crappy and weird and bizarre and you can't understand it, but that's because this is all an act. This is like Borat meets Connor for real. It's all an act. So the song is supposed okay, to be... Okay, wait a second, wait a second. Which, which song is this? Because we also have a Christian rap song, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is the this is, this is is the black dude with the, the huge jacket making the bizarre, like, boom, boom, big shot, hey, yo, hey, yo, like yeah, that weird okay. song. But this whole rap persona of his... That kind of an eraser head hairdo, that guy? No, he's wearing a hat. He's 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 all gangsta. But then he starts 
rapping in this weird Jamaican accent, and you can barely understand what he's saying. And he's making all these weird, bizarre sound effects and stuff. It's really oh, cool. okay, okay. That was like yeah, actually was- in the sound booth. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and then had to have fucking subtitles to figure out what he was saying. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. No, it's okay. But that, but the whole thing is an act. He's not actually a rapper. He's like a comedian. He's oh, just cool. trying to fuck with people. Cool. Now, after that one is I grab my, I grab my nuts. That's the next video. Yes. And I love that man. I love I grab my nuts. Well, as happens with as happens with your playlists like this. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize when it stopped, so I, I saw like three or four more videos from that guy. Oh, and I, I was love like, this and guy. And I was like, Steve must really like this guy. <laughs> I love this guy. He's he's a guy known as Pissed Off Gil. He's also known as GMC Faux Show. He is very well known on the internet for his insanely hit song that I've seen a bajillion times on my social media. I really miss my wigga have you seen that it's a really great it's a really great cheap stupid video about his friend who dies of a hernia and he's really sad and he misses him but he rewrites the song just in case any white people are listening to it and want to sing it okay he changes the end to a w it's a really funny video and it's been seen like millions of times on, just on YouTube, and then like someone posted it on Facebook, and it's been seen like 10 million times on there, so it, it, I wanted to pick another video for him that I think is as funny. Uh-huh. So I, I picked uh, uh, I Grab My Nuts, and I like that. Yeah. Now, after that video, that's the Christian rapper. Yes. The Christian rap song called God Taught Me by 18-year-old Nazi waif Zonti. Uh-huh. How much do you think he had to re- rent the two black kids for? Oh, yeah, I, I do not know. Because I, I am sorry. There is no way I will believe in hell that that kid has black friends. Yeah. No, never. Do you, no. Do you, do you know how, Bonnie, do you know how I started podcasting? How? God taught me to podcast. Yes. Seriously, honey. Seriously, seriously, honey. Uh, I think I was supposed to write bunny, but I wrote honey instead. But I, I'm going with it. I'm sticking with it. Seriously, bunny. Fuck this kid. Yes. I'm talking about Zonti and not the baby. Uh-huh. To paraphrase, to paraphrase Hunter S. Thompson, Zonti is what we all would be listening to if the Nazis had won World War II. <laughs> Looks like an albino too. Yeah. Not just not just that he's white, but like seriously, like I think like they recorded this video in thirty second clips because he couldn't be out in the sun that long. You know if you ever meet him in person you can see all of his veins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was going to look for a bio of Zonti, but then I realized I didn't want to put any effort into Zonti. Yeah. So I didn't do a bio for him. Oh, good. But I will tell his you, o- his opacity is set at like old. seventy-five. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did look him up, and he just turned eighteen, so he's legal, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. Now, the last song was actually the hardest one to find because I wanted the playlist to end with a normal, regular, honest to goodness music video from, say, the eighties or nineties. That was seen. That seemed like a normal video at the time, a normal song, and yada yada yada. But a song in a video that is now seen as a ridiculous fucking joke. Okay. Therefore, I present to you the last song in the video. She's strange by cameo. <laughs> An honest to wood R and B group from the eighties, and not the band from Eddie Murphy's Coming to America. Okay. As I think they look like. Sexual chocolate. Sexy chocolate. I think chocolate. They, they're, yeah, I think they're all sexual chocolate. And I love this video because it's ridiculous. But this was like every. And also like the lead singer of the band Cameo looks an awful lot like you could just. He's just some black guy with a 
porn stash and a jerry curl, but literally, I feel like you could pick him up and put him in any Turkish film. <laughs> Not exactly sure why, but this guy could easily like star in Turkish Rambo or yes. Turkish Jaws. He'd be the shark in Turkish Jaws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he could be the Turkish in Turkish Jaws. He'd be Turkish. And that is it for homework this week. We sincerely and literally so lit serially. Yes. We hope, we hope and pray that your eyes, minds, and pores have all been suitably opened. Ah! Uh, but don't think that you're getting out of here that easily, bucko, muchacho, buckchacho. <laughs> don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we are focusing on a very dangerous cult that continues to ensnare our nation's young people. Okay. I am talking about Chili's Restaurants. Ooh. I've got an article from GQ magazine from 2016, and it's a long article entitled The Church of Chili's. Okay. Apparently, inside the Church of Chili's, apparently there's there's you know, a, a big history of young people that are way too excited about their job of going store to store teaching people how to be Chili's team members. That's that's a that's a big important thing, oh. and it's a really interesting article. And there's it, it, it's in the news currently for a reason that we'll get to anyway. Step inside the Church of Chili's. I just sent you the link to it. Okay. Thank you. It it's, sounds interesting. <laughs> Eleanor, you have stolen this entire bag of candy. I know you're, you can't have this entire bag of candy. Okay? You sneaky little so-and-so. Here, I will give you a Milky Way, only because you successfully stole an entire bag, and if I... Don't let you have a little bit of this candy. You're going to flip the fuck out. So, um, here you go. Now go out and um, terrorize people. So that is next week on the Pop Up Film Podcast. Okay, a Chili's Restaurant article. Yes. Inside the Church of Chili's. I just sent you the link. All right. Thank you, sir. On the messenger. (laughs) 